Hi, so we're here to uh, talk about Oven. Uh, in the past, we've given some presentations about the architecture and sort of what we're planning, but uh, now we're, it's looking a little bit more real, and so we wanted to talk about how, uh, how to deploy it and what our scale testing is showing. My name is Justin Pettit. I'm one of the core Open vSwitch and OVN developers. Uh, I work at VMware. And uh, I'm, I'm one of the uh, Open vSwitch developer, developers at VMware also. Uh, I've been uh, working on the project uh, since, since it was started. And I'm Ben Pfaff. I'm Han from eBay and I work on SDN Solutions. And I'm not Russell. Uh, he, uh, for those of you who don't know, his wife uh, gave birth to their second child last week. Congratulations to them. They're all doing well. Uh, my name is Ryan Motes. Uh, I'm at IBM, and we're really interested in this stuff. So we've been actually putting it in place and doing a lot of testing with it, which we'll talk about later. So uh, my guess is that a lot of you already have an idea of what network virtualization is, but I'm going to give a little bit of a review for, uh, for anybody who, who might be new to it. So uh, network virtualization, uh, the, the, the way I like to explain it is to go back and look at the structure of a physical network in your data center or your office. So if you look at the left side of my diagram, uh, you can see a bunch of hosts, and they're connected by switches, they're connected by routers, and the physical topology of the system uh, determines uh, what can reach what and, and what it has to go through. Now, when you take those hosts and you move them onto hypervisors, usually your physical network doesn't let you uh, reproduce that topology. So if you want to have uh, a, a, a network that, that uh, behaves as your physical network did, then you have to introduce uh, new concepts uh, and uh, ideally, you want to implement those, uh, those switches and routers uh, in a distributed way in, in, in software. And so network virtualization is how you build things uh, to let you do that. Um, and then beyond that, uh, there, uh, when we were at, uh, at Nasira before it was acquired by VMware, when we were talking to a lot of our customers, uh, the, the, the big, uh, big thing for them was uh, not only that they needed those features, but they needed them to be self-service. Um, at, at the time, when you looked at, uh, at clouds, uh, what you saw was that uh, you, you were able to uh, deploy your own, uh, your own virtual machines in terms of, say, virtual CPUs. Uh, you, you had self-service access to storage. But if you needed anything more than the most trivial uh, virtual networking, then you had to go to your uh, networking department. You had the, to get them to set up VLANs and so on. Um, and network virtualization aims to, uh, to avoid that problem uh, by making it possible to, uh, to do everything uh, yourself without having to uh, uh, involve networking. So I wanted to just quickly go over what OVN is, what it's providing. Um, most of you are probably familiar with uh, network virtualization, so it does the things you'd expect. You can create logical switches, logical routers, uh, create security groups, uh, and um, ACLs L2 through L4. Um, we support uh, multiple different tunnel overlays uh, because they all have various trade-offs, uh, so we like to give people options there. Uh, we've also uh, provided the ability to have oven control top of rack uh, switches uh, so that you can more easily integrate your physical workloads into your logical uh, workloads. And so um, oven works with a number of different um, hardware providers to do that, but that won't be the focus of this talk. But uh, if you have any questions, you can feel free and ask me afterwards. Uh, Oven is really aimed to work on OVS, so it works on the same platforms as OVS. Uh, so we do most of our development on Linux, on uh, KVM and Zen. The, uh, we've also been looking quite a bit at how to make it work with containers, so there's some work there that's continuing to, uh, to evolve as the container networking uh, evolves as well, but we're very involved in those discussions. Uh, we also have work with DPDK and Hyper-V that's underway. Uh, so, the best integration that we have right now is actually with OpenStack Neutron, uh, but we're being very careful that the things that we put into Oven are not just uh, OpenStack specific, and so uh, it, we plan to have it work with other CMSs, and we have a number of command line utilities. That's actually how we use, uh, like Ben and I, uh, usually test it. So you can do everything that you would want through, um, through the command line or through database calls that you could do through Neutron. So, 
OVN is being developed by the same community as Open vSwitch, and it's being developed in the same way, too. So um, all of the development is happening out in the open. Uh, it's on the OVS mailing lists. Uh, anyone can, can jump in. They can see it as it evolves. Um, all the design decisions are being discussed uh, there as well. <clears throat> it's uh, vendor neutral, so it started with a small number of uh, vendors who got behind and wanted to start working it, but it's grown as eBay and IBM and Red Hat have, um, have joined in. Uh, it's under a uh, Apache license, and uh, you know, as I mentioned, that there are a lot of vendors involved. And if you look at the uh, for the Metaka release, the Neutron plugin, the top five reviewers are from five companies, and the four committers are from four different companies. Uh, so it's a pretty uh, diverse uh, affiliation uh, associated with Oven. So our goals are uh, to make it production quality. Uh, the OVS, uh, I think, has a pretty good reputation in general, not necessarily the plugin so much, but the OVS core itself. Uh, and so we want to continue that. That's really important to us. Uh, the design is pretty straightforward, as you'll see in some of the decisions that we've made uh, in, uh, in, in the architecture. Uh, it scales to thousands of hypervisors. We've already tested it in the low thousands, um, but we expect to uh, see that um, grow in the next couple of months. Uh, our goal is to have 10,000 hypervisors supported before long. Um, and we hope that it'll have improved performance and stability over the existing OVS plugin uh, that's available. And we hope that it's embraced by the, the Neutron community and it becomes the preferred method um, for most people who want to use uh, OVS or networking in general. So uh, you know, why, why, is the OpenStack, why should OpenStack care? Uh, the primary job of Neutron is to provide a uh, cloud networking API, uh, and so we want to um, clean that up, make that uh, work a little better than some of the existing solutions. Uh, we're adding this into OVS. It's actually a little bit of a separate project, but it's co-located, so we're not putting, baking anything into OVS that's oven-specific, but we are expanding oven, or sorry, OVS in ways that makes this easier. And so there are other projects like Dragonflow that are also making use of some of these features, and the uh, existing um, OVS plugin has also been making some of the features that we've used to improve oven. All of these things are available, and they're not oven-specific. And we, the design that we do uh, seems to have uh, better performance and scale uh, over some of the other solutions. So uh, I'll spend a few minutes uh, expanding on uh, what, what's different about OVN uh, compared to the existing uh, uh, Open vSwitch plugin and, and uh, other things that, uh, uh, that are out there. So let, let's start out with the uh, OVN architecture. So uh, starting from the, uh, the, the top of the diagram, uh, what you see there is the, the cloud management system at, at the top. So uh, in the case of OpenStack, that would be OpenStack Neutron and the, uh, uh, the, the, the plugin for OVN uh, in, in Neutron. So the, the primary way that, that that communicates with OVN is through a, a database uh, labeled there as the northbound database. So that database contains the logical configuration of the system. So uh, for example, it, it has uh, tables that represent logical switches, logical routers, uh, ports on virtual machines, uh, ACLs, and other concepts that you, your uh, network administrator is likely to be familiar with. It doesn't contain anything physical. Uh, for example, there, there's nothing there uh, about hypervisors or, uh, or, or where things are, are located physically in the system. So uh, the northbound database has only one other client, and that is a daemon called uh, NorthD, or o OVN NorthD. The, the goal of NorthD is to take this, uh, this set of concepts that are familiar to the administrator and familiar to Neutron and translate them into lower level concepts that are easier for the uh, hypervisors to implement uh, um, uh, fairly directly. So it takes things like logical routers and then it translates them into what we call logical flows. And if you have any familiarity with OpenFlow, a logical flow is a lot like an OpenFlow flow. The major difference is that the concepts that it uses are uh, logical ones. So for example, instead of speaking of physical ports, it speaks about logical ports. An example of a logical port might be, for example, a, a, a VIF uh, on, a, on a VM. So it, it takes this lower level representation and it pushes it to a second database that we call the southbound database. 
This database has, uh, but besides Northy, it, it has uh, every hypervisor uh, as a client. And the client there is a daemon called OVN Controller. Uh, OVN Controller has uh, a bunch of responsibilities. It is, uh, it, it pushes northbound into that southbound database. That's a little confusing. It, it pushes uh, to the southbound database, um, for example, the, the, the set of ports that are bound on, uh, on, on its own hypervisor. Uh, it, it pulls down all of the logical flows and it, it translates those logical flows uh, into ones that are, are, are physical flows for its hypervisor. So for example, um, for a, a logical port that is actually a VIF on that hypervisor, it would, it would translate that into a reference to that VIF. Uh, if the logical port refers to a, a, a VIF that's on a different hypervisor, then instead it would translate that uh, into a, a reference to a tunnel to that hypervisor so that if uh, packets were destined to it, then it can send them across the tunnel. And, and then uh, uh, on the other side, southbound, OVN controller uh, talks to the local open vSwitch instance uh, over the same channels that, uh, that any open flow controller would use. So it, it speaks OVSDB and OpenFlow uh, to, uh, uh, to the local open vSwitch instance. So uh, here's a, a little more uh, information on that architecture of, of, OBN, of OVN. We use these databases, these central databases, to coordinate and configure uh, the whole system. Uh, currently, we're using OVSDB for those databases. It's possible that, uh, that if we uh, run into uh, scale limitations there, perhaps we'll switch to a different database. Uh, the particular database is not essential uh, to the system. Uh, and uh, the, the other uh, point is that uh, most, of the, uh, most of the work in the system happens at the hypervisors. Uh, it's a distributed controller, um, uh, not, not primarily a, central, a centralized one. Uh, it's a centralized database. Uh, and uh, the architecture is one that we came up with after seeing um, a couple of generations of controllers at, at Nasera and VMware. Uh, we, uh, we think that we've uh, learned from the experience of the good parts and the bad parts of, of the designs there. All right, so this slide should be familiar to anybody who's done Neutron up through Mataka as far as you know, how security groups are handled. Um, this has been one of the pain points for our OVS and the fact that A, it's fairly painful to uh, put this together in the control plane. B, if you're running OVS bridge, hey, you've got Linux bridges there as well. You've, you've doubled what you've got. And if I count uh, in a path through, I think I've got like six stacks that I have to run through to get a packet from the VM on the left to the VM on the right. And that's not an optimal way to do things. So passing it back to Justin. So with Oven, we're using a new approach. Uh, this is something that we talked about last year, which is making use of a connection tracker uh, so that stateful uh, connections can actually be managed and maintained by OVS itself. And so by doing that, we, can, uh, we don't have to go out to IP tables in order to do the, uh, the stateful firewalling. And so it's much more streamlined. Uh, as I mentioned, this is something that we, um, we introduced a while ago, and we've been talking with other people about how to do this as well. So there was a presentation yesterday about the existing uh, OVS plugin that makes use of this as well, and you just get much better performance. Uh, this is a slide from a uh, presentation that we did last year in Vancouver. Um, this is before it was integrated into um, any project. It was more, um, we were still working on getting it upstreamed in the kernel. But you can see that the, that the throughput uh, improves uh, significantly um, by not going through, um, through those multiple stages. So the other painful point for folks doing Neutron and the, the reference implementation is, is L3. Um, it's agent-based, which has implications in the, the RabbitMQ plane. Um, again, you're back to using uh, the Linux IP stack and IP tables uh, in different namespaces for forwarding and NAT. And uh, you can do overlapping IP addresses with it, but you end up with a bunch of complex stuff to, to actually handle uh, what you're trying to do. And from an operational point of view, it's often difficult to figure out where things went wrong. Um, if folks made it to the notorious MTU discussion this morning, um, the slides on what could possibly go wrong were just astounding. Therefore, 
Oh, actually. Um, therefore, the picture that this turns into is that. Um, I am not going to read through it because it's an eye chart. If you want more information, the networking guide is perfectly good. Um, I am on the hook to put something similar to this together for the networking OVN, OVN project. So that's going to get documented so that uh, operators can actually set this up out of the box and, and get it to, uh, to try it out and kick the tires. So something simpler rather than similar, I hope. Simpler, yes. Yeah. So yeah, something simpler. Uh, so for the Oven L3 design, uh, this is something that I'm not aware of other um, open source projects doing. This is something a similar approach that we used in the commercial product that VMware sells, NSX, uh, but that we're in, or we've actually already implemented it in Oven. Uh, and so that is, we're using, um, we, we're doing distributed L3 in a slightly better way or a more efficient way. Instead of going to like a network namespace and then configuring that, we actually do all of the L3 processing in OVS, which is much faster. So with, uh, without Oven, uh, normally what you would do is you would attach it to a VIS, send it to uh, a network namespace, and then that would have the networking configuration, then it would pop back out, and then you would route it someplace else. Uh, with Oven, uh, we actually program that as flows. And so rather than making all of those jumps, we've cached the, what the eventual destination is. So even if there are multiple hops, we will decrement the TTL by that number of hops, and then we'll just set the, the correct MAC address, destination MAC address, and then we'll send it on its way, which is much more efficient. So everything can just stay in the kernel and be a single lookup there. Uh, we've also been... Um, with uh, one of the big things about how how large you can span a uh, an L2 network has to do with uh, broadcast. The biggest broadcaster usually in most networks uh, is ARP, and so we've built into Oven ARP suppression so that rather than having to do that that broadcast and send it to all the different nodes, we locally in Oven controller um, find out what the you know, we trap that ARP request and then generate an ARP reply and then send it back so that there is no um, ARP that's going out over the, the network, it never crosses a tunnel. And, uh, and the other thing is that we make no use of the Neutron L3 agent. One thing that we've, uh, that our goals for Oven is that we don't require any additional daemons to be run. We, the only thing is Oven controller runs, uh, runs there, and then um, it does everything else that you, would, that you would need to provide networking. So the control plane scalability is uh, one of the most uh, important thing for the SD solution. So uh, to achieve the target, the first, first thing we need is we need an environment to validate scale and to verify the improvements we did. So uh, it's unrealistic to have a big data center to just uh, for the testing purpose. So we need, a, we made this uh, testing simulation framework just for control plan. And uh, we can simulate two, 200, uh, 2,000 hypervisors with just 20 bare metals. And we use Rally for the de deployment, which is uh, uh, familiar with uh, in the open, op OpenStack community. And so this architecture, uh, the structure is that uh, we have a central node that's uh, uh, hosting the central part of the OVN, uh, which can, can, can uh, compress uh, by the OVN NOSD process and uh, the OVS DB server processes which hosting the uh, northbound DB and southbound DB. And this central node is uh, connected to the farm, test farm, which is uh, comprised of uh, tens of bare metals. Uh, on each bare metal we have, uh, we are running uh, many, many sandboxes. So this is uh, uh, utilizing the OVS sandbox with a very handy feature. And it's just uh, so on each sandbox, each sandbox is simulating a hypervisor, actually. So on each sandbox, there are three uh, major processes running. One is the OVN controller, which is a distributed part of the OVN architecture. And the other is uh, OVS, uh, OVS processes, including the OVS VHD and the OVS DB server. Uh, so, uh, this, this, this project is actually under uh, hosting by, by the Open Switch on their GitHub, so you're very welcome to contribute. So I think most people are very interested in current scale achieved by OVN. So based on the testing framework, we did uh, some testing and uh, uh, with pure OVN uh, setup, which means there's no neutron plugging involved yet. 
but this is the current uh, uh, data. So for the layer two part, we have uh, 2K hypervisors and 20K Wave ports bounded on the system, and uh, there are 200 notch switches. So on the right-hand figure, uh, it means it's a uh, number of ports, uh, the port creation and binding speed, uh, along with the uh, increase of the number of ports in the system. So the high, uh, the right, right end is uh, we achieve the 20k ports, and you can see the speed getting slow. And uh, on right, on high scale, the, the number of ports, the speed is getting low, but. Uh, uh, this is not the focus here, uh, since this is still a simulating system, and uh, we're sort of overcommitting the CPU. And uh, uh, on each bare metal, we have 40 cores, uh, but we are running 100 sandboxes, so it's sort of overcommitting. So in a production environment, it can be even better number. But the focus here is uh, we can achieve the two uh, 2K hypervisors. Uh, without any issues, and the OVN is still working pretty well. And we also tried 3K hypervisors, but there are some issues. Uh, not, not issues, but uh, the, the, the speed is getting very slow, and we don't want to claim that is the uh, scale we achieved. But for, uh, for the near 2, if you're running provider networks, so this is all that you need. For near 3, it means you need to get the notch routers involved, and uh, connecting with different logic switches. Uh, this is to be tested. So expectation for that part can be a little bit lower because of the complexity there and the uh, work is ongoing. So uh, the scale achieved here, there was efforts and improvements already done. So. Uh, this is a list of what we did based on the scalability test environment, uh, the data provided by the in environment, and uh, we did profiling, and uh, so uh, it's very, very, very concrete result we get. So for each Im improvement, we can get regression, and we can get a uh, hotspot. Uh, one example here is the uh, local data path optimization. So uh, the, the figure here shows the improvement. It's very significant. And, uh, uh, and there, so what we did is just uh, low hind fruits so far. There are even more uh, important work is ongoing in the community, and uh, more uh, better result will be expected. So the OVN controller, there are two uh, already under view. Uh, one is the incremental computing is doing by Ryan, and uh, conditional monitoring is doing by Liran, who is also here, and showed very good results yesterday uh, shared with us. And incremental computing, we also verified in this, uh, uh, the patch is verified in this testing environment. Uh, it's not yet merged, but it's very promising. And over in NOS D, which is the central part, the incremental computation is also very critical for the scalability. And we just got very good news from Bain that uh, uh, the NNOC system from WinWare will be open sourced, and which is uh, very helpful for the incremental computing for the logic flows. And OVSDB is, uh, is one of the hot topic, but so far what we, we got uh, is that uh, uh, even with single thread, it's still be able to handle 2K hypervisors. Uh, there's ongoing work for multi-threading. Uh, I think it's Andy who is doing that job. And it's, so it's expecting a very uh, even better result. And uh, ACL, if you're familiar with uh, security group, so if using remote group, the scalability will get in bad easily. And uh, this effort uh, is the address set is to handle, to improve in, uh, improving that situation. Uh, this work is doing by Russell, and the code is almost ready uh, to be merged, I think. Thank you, thank you. All right, so the Neutron plugin lives in the networking OVN project. Um, as we've said, it speaks OVSDB to configure OVN. 
uh, via the northbound database. Um, the point here is a lot of their, there's a lot of efforts to get rid of all of the existing agents, the DHCP agent, the metadata agent, get those into uh, the OVN controller process so that we can keep the RabbitMQ bus from melting down when we scale up because it, it's, it's, a bit of, it's a bit of a pain. Um, one of the reasons why we at IBM are interested in this is that we have doubled down. We will run this in our public cloud. Where this, is, this is what we're going to do. So we are currently having it in test with OpenStack. We've done a, a 15 hypervisor deployment. You can see what we've achieved. Uh, we've done a 90 hypervisor deployment. Uh, and you can see what we've achieved there. Those are the targets that we had for those deployments. That isn't to say that's where they broke. That was just the targets we have had for them and we met them. And we are in the process of putting a uh, 300 hypervisor and a 700 hypervisor deployment out there to test the uh, control plane improvements because simulation is wonderful, but we all know that simulation and um, reality can be sometimes different. One of the other advantages that we have comes in deployment. Um, because simply, deployment is easy. Uh, there's no additional daemons. Uh, host level is very simple. You can do rolling upgrades. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, we'll get to that a little bit more. Um, Puppet OpenStack now supports it. And uh, O. there's a posting out there that's, that's for review. Um, I don't think it's merged quite yet. Now, as far as the rolling upgrades, OVSDB scheme is versioned. So when you put it in there, it's carefully managed. This allows rolling upgrades. Um, we've actually done this. We've, we've set up uh, instances running data connections and pushed the big red redeploy button for the OVN control plane and the data plane and watched it work and not disturb the user uh, connection. We have not done kernel upgrades because we need to get live migration first. So truth in advertising. Um, this is the same strategy that OVS itself has been using, and uh, we can certainly say that it works. And let's get this to the next slide, and Ben, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks. So I'm going to talk about uh, where we are and, uh, and where we're going. So uh, tell you a little bit about the, uh, um, what, what we're targeting for the, the upcoming release. So uh, we're, we're working on uh, a bunch of features that aren't quite there yet. Uh, uh, we, we already mentioned uh, multi-threading of OVSDB server for, uh, for performance. Uh, we're also working on high availability uh, using the, the Raft distributed log algorithm. Uh, that should be uh, available uh, pretty soon. We're working on uh, support for an, an L3 gateway uh, with, with NAT. Uh, which is a, a feature that, uh, that, that a lot of people are looking for, I think. Uh, we, we have IPv4 uh, logical routing in our logical routers. Uh, IPv6, I, I believe patches for that have been posted once or twice. They've been posted, but had them for a while. Uh, uh, patches for that have been under development for a while, and uh, uh, now that uh, Justin is no longer uh, spending all of his time playing manager, my, my guess is that he'll uh, uh, get a chance to uh, actually do some, uh, some development. He's been itching to get back to that. So uh, I, I think we'll see that soon. Uh, we, we have uh, patches uh, that have been uh, posted and are under review for native DHCP uh, so, that, uh, um, uh, so that there's, there's no need for a uh, for individual uh, um, DHCP daemons for, for each uh, logical network. Um, and, and in fact, no, no need for extra daemons at all. Uh, metadata proxy is, uh, is, is in the works. Uh, we've had some proposals there, uh, and I, I think we're going to figure out uh, what, what's the best strategy for that. Um, my, my favorite so far is to, uh, um, to do it using a uh, general purpose uh, service function chaining, but uh, I, I don't know whether that will be the approach we end up using. Um, address sets were, were already mentioned. Those uh, should al uh, allow for um, some, some extra efficiency when there are uh, uh, large groups of, uh, of IP addresses or, or other kinds of addresses that, uh, that, that lots of ACLs uh, reference. And uh, uh, finally, we're uh, um, uh, working on support for routed networks. Uh, you, you can see uh, our, our, uh, our, our logo for our, our milestone there, uh, the, the, the microwave uh, uh, release, we're calling it. Uh, 
Um, but before that, we had the, uh, the, the toaster oven and the, uh, the easy bake oven. Uh, so as you can see, we're, uh, we're moving to higher technologies uh, uh, all the time. So here's a, a list of resources that you can go look at if you're interested in learning more about, uh, about Oven. I'm, I'm not going to uh, uh, read all these uh, to you. Um, so you can look at them now, or you can refer to our, our slides that we'll, uh, we'll post after the talk, or you can come talk to us. And uh, finally, if uh, you want to, uh, uh, want to help, then uh, one of the greatest ways to help would be to, to try it. And, and test it and report bugs and in addition report uh, successes because uh, I know as a developer one of my frustrations is that I tend to only get bug reports. Uh, no, nobody tells me if it works okay for them. Uh, so uh, here, here are the, uh, um, the, the, the different places you can go uh, to, uh, uh, to get involved. And uh, that's the end of our talk. Um, and uh, we, we can take questions now. I think I will flip it back to the, uh, the previous slide because I think that's more informative. So uh, we'll take questions. Thanks. This is uh, very interesting, very informative. I've uh, got a couple of questions. Um, one from the NSX side to the VMware guys there. Is this what's going to be under the hood of the merge of the multi-hypervisor and vSphere NSX product? So this, uh, the, the OVN project is completely independent of, uh, of, of NSX. Uh, we've, uh, we've learned a lot from our experiences mm -hmm. with, with NSX, but we're, uh, uh, we're not using uh, any of the code from it. I, I know that somebody earlier said something about uh, open sourcing NLog, uh, which is a big component of, of NSX. Uh, but in fact, that, that's unrelated code. It just implements the same thing. Okay, that kind of segues into the second part, which is how are you going to approach layer four through seven services, and do you have a strategy, do you have partners for that? Uh, so what do you mean by, in, in per, what part of layer four through layer um, seven do you mean? Say, for example, load balancing? Okay, yeah, so, so there are patches for uh, ACLs that are, um, or sorry, not ACLs, sorry, uh, for NAT that are, uh, we just got the NAT component upstreamed in the kernel for OVS. The load balancing uh, is going to leverage that as well. So the, uh, there are patches, I think they've been sent out on load balancing. If they haven't, I would expect them in the next few weeks, uh, but they're actively being worked on, and so we'll be making use of the, oh, they have, Okay, yeah, so there's a draft out, so, um, so that's, that's leveraging the, the connection tracker, sort of like the ACLs are. Um, if you want to talk DPI or something, then, you know, then I think we're looking more at, we have some ideas about how we can um, send traffic from the kernel up into user space for a DPI engine, um, but also you know, we may be looking at like service function chaining, that sort of thing. Thanks. Um, since there are four of you, I almost feel like this is a panel. Okay. And since this session was actually marked as beginning level, I feel like it's okay to ask this question. Yes. Do we really need so many open source networking alternatives in OpenStack? And will we ever fine. see them merging back together so there are fewer? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, it's an excellent question. Um, the... It's been one of, one of my personal frustrations. Um, I, I liken it, unfortunately, to a little bit of the history of, of Neutron, that we are in the, the situation we are now. Um, the honest truth is networking means different things to different people. What, what you might have as networking requirements as an operator might be different from your requirements as an operator, might be different from my requirements as an operator. And if there's one thing that, that I think we found because of the, the, all the different solutions, to try and get a one-size-fits-all solution just makes a whole lot of people unhappy. Um, it's not a great answer, but I'd rather be in sort of the IETF model of let a thousand flowers grow and let people pick the thing they want, even though for the poor guys that are doing docs and, and they know who they are, it makes their life heck. Um, I'd rather be doing that than, than come up with a solution and have everybody go, well, that doesn't work and wander away. So. Well, where it really complicates things is as we try to drive new features into the upper level API, um, like 
I'm, I'm pushing hard to get a security group logging capability into the API. And then all of a sudden, all these networking alternatives underneath don't support it or they break? Well, so, so in that case, what you're worried about is um, specifically the reference connection or the reference implementation or reference implementations since there's, there's Linux Bridge and OVS, so let's, let's not forget Linux Bridge. Um, you are concerned with getting that to work. Um, something like OVN, because it's in the networking OVN project, it's up to the networking OVN people to make that work once it appears in the core uh, Neutron project. So it, it's not really your responsibility to worry about all these other things. I would, I would say just worry about the, the reference implementations and, and they've all got to figure out their own, their own business. Okay, so my question is about the North D, which does the translation between the North database and the South database base. Uh, what is the um, design consideration of having that hosted in a central database location versus pushing that as a direct translation uh, onto the uh, OVN controller? So uh, the, the, the design there, uh, it, well, so, that, that's one of those places where uh, I, I really had to defer to the experience of, uh, of some, some people uh, at Nasir and VMware who'd built controllers before. My first design uh, for OVN, my first proposal, uh, and, I, and, and Justin, Justin and I worked on this together, our first design had, uh, had that, uh, essentially what was in that north, uh, northbound database um, at the hi uh, had all the hypervisors pulling from that directly, um, and, and then I and then I sp uh, I showed that to, uh, to to some of the some of the people who had worked on NVP and, and NSX, and they said, "What are you doing? That that isn't that that isn't going to work." And they uh, uh, they they I explained it to me, and it it, it took a, a long time for me to to get convinced. Um, so I, I can understand why, why you'd have skepticism too. Justin, do you have a better technical view on that? Um, not really. I mean, I think that, um, yeah, I mean, I think we, yeah, it's probably a worth, uh, we documented some of the reasoning. I would have to, to go back and look at all of that we went through. On that. Uh, but, but, but in the end there, that, that translation, the southbound database, uh, the bits that North D writes, those are, those are a deterministic function of what's in the northbound database. So if, if that turns out to be a bottleneck, then I think there are several ways that we could uh, distribute uh, or, or shard uh, the work that North D does, or possibly we could even uh, distribute it down to the hypervisors. Um, I, uh, so far, it, it seems pretty far from being uh, an important bottleneck in the system, but I, I certainly understand the viewpoint that it looks like one, I agree. So when it comes to that level of scaling limitation, it'll be open for having such uh, modifications or enhancements to the current architecture? Right, I think the, uh, the, the big thing that we're planning there is to, uh, uh, currently, uh, Northy is written in a very simple way uh, so that whenever the northbound database changes, it processes everything and then sends the differences to the southbound database. Um, the obvious thing to do there would be what we were calling incremental computation before, so that if you make a, a small change to the northbound database, we do a small computation in North D, and, th and then we send those changes. Um. One thing I would say is that we didn't spend a lot of time early on in the architecture trying to optimize everything. We tried to do everything uh, in a way that was obviously correct. Um, and now we're going through and doing the evaluation to then see where the hotspots are. Because oftentimes, in our experience, if you try and make guesses of where the problems are, then you end up in the wrong spot. And so everything right now is very straightforward. And now we're saying, seeing that, you know, that we, I mean, it's pretty obvious that reprocessing everything is going to be expensive, but let's just make things correct. And then later on, we can add incremental update, and then, you know, that's going to be much more complicated. Um, but at least it works up until then. Just, just let me add to that, that uh, in fact, I, I had a bunch of guesses uh, where we would find the first bottlenecks when we scaled it, and I was wrong. So I'm, I'm glad that we didn't pre-optimize those. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you said uh, OVN is going to be production ready by new time, but is it still going to have a feature parity with the existing uh, agent-based implementation of Neutron? I'm especially concerned about uh, HA routers, DVR, and things like that. So, um, 
independent of Newton release or not, um, we are going to run it in OVN. Uh, we're going to run our public cloud with OVN. And at the point we run it, it will have feature parity with uh, DVR, HA, what's there today. So, no, you know, so it, it will be there by the Newton release. Um, it will hopefully be there before the Newton release because we plan on being out there before Newton is done. Uh, yeah, so you guys talked a bit about a scale, but I wanted to touch base more on the HA side. So you said OVS DB is going to evolve in some sort of sequentially consistent store with Raft implementation. But at the same time, there are a lot of other moving pieces like uh, your North D process and the whole pu published subscribe network that you have set up between uh, Southbound DB and OVN controllers, and those networks can get partitioned, and you have to do a lot of state synchronization between northbound, southbound, and the OVN controllers. Is there some testing and uh, uh, some sort of analysis being done uh, given any of these components can fail and networks can get partitioned that you can still maintain the invariance that you want to maintain? Uh, of, of course, testing will be, uh, will be important, and we, uh, uh, we, we, we have a, a plan to, to do thorough testing. Um, I, I think that part of uh, what you're worried about is, uh, uh, is that, that it's not necessary to worry about that to the same extent. You're talking about that publish subscribe mechanism, for example. That is, in fact, um, the, a core component of OVSDB. It's, it's not a separate service. It's, uh, um, it, it's basically how uh, all, all clients uh, that, that I know about uh, use OVSDB. So it's a, uh, it's a fundamental feature. If that was broken, the system wouldn't work. So, so if you get a network partition, and a lot of these pu published subscribe connections break. When they come back, the full state is synchronized? Uh, so the, it, it won't be fully re resynchronized. We have mechanisms to uh, basically pick up where it left off in uh, common cases where, uh, where it's, it's cheaper than sending the, the entire state. OK, thanks. And it looks like that's the end of our, uh, uh, of our, our time, but uh, I think that all of us are, are available to, uh, to talk to people after the session. Thank you.